Dear friends, dear colleagues, welcome back to the Mangano Digital Academy. Welcome back to the essential of digital dentistry. In this uh, short video, we will talk about uh, uh, printing uh, zirconia. This is one of the new frontiers of digital dentistry, one of the new challenges and options also that we have as digital prosthodontists, for example, but also as digital surgeons. As I told you, digital dentistry is made by an essentially based on four steps. The data acquisition that uh, brings us from the real to the virtual world by means of combining computer tomography, intraoral, desktop, face scan, and digital condylography. We acquire, we collect a series of white data, and these data then are sent to a computer assisted design software. It can be a prosto software, a surgical software, an ortho software. Uh, the, the lab technician usually elaborate this data and create a project and this project is then sent to the computer assistant manufacturing software and the milling unit or the 3D printer for the shaping or the making of this project, so the production. And uh, here we go from virtual to real once again. And then there's the clinical application. So we have different applications for the different fields. For example, in surgery, we can make surgical guide. In, in prosthodontics, we can make or shape a fixed or removable uh, prosthesis. In ortho, we can make devices like a liner or, uh, I mean, customized device, retainers, everything. So uh, basically, we have the clinical application. In, in this case, uh, we, we, we try to talk about the 3D printing of zirconia. And uh, since it's a totally new field, we try to investigate the, the quality of the restoration made by or printed in zirconia in 3D, but also we, we try to understand the mechanical resistance and reliability of this new material, because after all, this is a totally new material. It cannot be really compared with the milled one. So we made this very easy study in, in the design in order to evaluate the differences uh, of uh, milled and 3D printed zirconia blocks and uh, uniaxial compression, uniaxial loading. It's only one kind of analysis. Of course, we are going to complete this analysis with a variable analysis and flexor strength analysis as well, because it's also very important. The, the, the technology used for 3D printing, in this case restoration, is the lithography-based ceramic manufacturing, LCM, that is a proprietary technology by Lithos. This Austrian company is one of the most important companies in the world uh, in, uh, in the field of 3D printing of ceramics, not only zirconia, but also lithium desilicate in our field and in, for our application specifically, but also in the medical field. So the dental field is a little field compared to the medical one. The point is that now we are able through this machine like Serafab S65 by Lithos to print this restoration. It's something totally new. We didn't have this option 10 years ago. And the lithography based ceramic manufacturing process is based on layer by layer curing of a ceramic suspension using visible blue LED light. Basically, the ceramic suspension, in this case Litacon uh, 3Y, consists of 3% molar yttria stabilized zirconia ceramic powder, so it's zirconia, and photocurable uh, resin additive to, um, for optimal processability. So the STL file of the crown is split in layer by the computer and projected layer by layer onto ceramic suspension, which is hardened and cured by photopolymerization. And it forms the so-called green body. This green body consists of the shape giving polymer and obviously the zirconia particle fixed within. And after 3D printing, the green bodies undergo post-treatment, so they are cleaned uh, of the excess of material and in, a, in a cleaning fluid, dedicated and proprietary fluid in cleaning station, and then, most important thing, sintered in order to obtain pure zirconium oxide in the thermal post-processing. Sintering is carried out in a furnace and at a very high temperature, like 1450 degrees, um, with a dwell time of two hours in, in, under a normal atmosphere and without increased pressure. In this way, we can eliminate all the resin. We can obtain only a dense, more than 99.4-99.6% amount of zirconia in these blocks and in these restorations. 
So the sinterization is very important in order to obtain the pure zirconia and to eliminate the photopolymer and the resin along this time with the temperature. This is a very easy process if we can think about it. But the point is that the machine is not easy at all. The characteristics of the machine are very advanced. This is a very powerful machine, a very powerful tool and the dental uh, laboratories, the biggest dental laboratories and the big dental companies are now investing in this machine because this is a game changer definitely. Let's think about for example our 3D printed um, uh, zirconia implants for example made for, by the companies or also 3D printed uh, uh, root analog implants for example for the or 3D printed um, meshes for, 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 for bone regeneration in zirconia. We have several options in the surgical field but the main probably the main uh, application is in prosto for the fixed restoration. And here the characteristic of this ceramic suspension. If we watch the scanning electron microscopy we see the layers and we see the density. The density can be over 99.6% and it is very promising from this um, point of view. But in our study what we did basically we, uh, we created 20, we, we fabricated 20 zirconia blocks, 10 of them were 3D printed, the test blocks, and 10 of them were milled using a conventional milling unit, the one I have in my clinic, the Roland D52. And then we um, evaluated the, the, the behavior of these blocks under uniaxial compressive loading using the state-of-the-art test in this in vitro comparative study. And what we found is that uh, um, under mechanical compression, four of the test sample reached failure. Uh, whereas all the control samples did not reach failure. This is one of the first indications. But we were of course at the limit of the load cell. Uh, however, we have to say that 3D printed samples, the, the ones that did not break, revealed very interesting properties. For example, a better model of elasticity and a lower tendency to deformation under compression when compared to the milled ones. And considering that the, the forces uh, in which the, 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 the test sample reached break and, and failure was very high, then we, we can consider that, that the results were very interesting despite of the limits of the study, the experimental set in the in vitro design and only one type of force applied. We can say that yes, there's a difference between the test and control sample, but both samples behaved very well. This article has been published recently online in the Journal of Dentistry. And here the, the, the scheme of the uniaxial compressive loading, four of the test uh, blocks reached the failure under compression, no one of the milled zirconia blocks, despite of it the, the 3D printed zirconia blocks revealed very interesting properties. And here we can see the, if we watch the scanning electron microscopy, these blocks, we find the microporous surface of the 3D printed test samples as clearly a direction of the sample printing indicated by parallel lines. And we can see inside some porosity and probably the key to control the failure is to try to reduce or control this porosity that is something unavoidable from one side if you print it. So in order to reduce this porosity that of course doesn't exist with the millet sample, we can of course improve the, 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 the printing process. But also we have to say that uh, um, we can evaluate the behavior of the sample uh, underwent, that underwent uh, um, failure and we can see the, the characteristics, the, 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 the mechanical and the physical characteristics of these samples and we found some very interesting points in favor of the 3D printed samples as well. So yes, Finally, the conclusion is probably it looks that the, the, the millet one are more reliable, but we should not underestimate the positive uh, things related to, uh, to 3D printing. So everything is new and we need to go deeper in order to understand better the property of the 3D printed material that is totally different from the millet one. Uh, so thank you very much for your kind attention.